This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. Hello, football fans, and welcome to the Onside Kick. My name is Ricky Whitmer, and as always, I'm joined by the Mark Weber. Dub them ease. And- how you doing today, Mark? How you doing this week? Doing is good. it going good for you? Well, it's been a long week. I'm a little tired, but you know, what are you going to do? It's Wednesday. We are also recording, like you said, Wednesday. It's a mm-hmm. whole day later yeah. because of you. I'm just yep. throwing it out there to everyone. I'm throwing you under the bus it's because of you. I have a lot, of, a lot of work to do. A lot of work. To a do. lot of work at our real jobs yeah. that we had to do, but we are still here to bring you a jam-packed show like we always do that kind of the MVP thing, or it's the Ricky Widmer MVP thing. Nothing but jam-packed shows. I haven't figured that out yet completely, but we're going to be talking about some Sammy Bradford and some comments that he made this week. We're also going to be looking at the officiating in the NFL and how that ties to the Baltimore Ravens, and then we're going to be looking at some comments, a little story that Mike Shanahan dropped on us this week, but before we get into all that, if you support the show each and every week by liking and subscribing. If you're new and you want to give that little extra support, go ahead and check out our Patreon page, patreon.com backslash most valuable podcast. It's just a little way for the fans to give that little extra support if you're inclined to. And hey, if you give just a little bit, you can get an exclusive podcast just for Patreon patrons. But we're going to get right into it. We're going to start. In the city of brotherly love, as they like to call it. I don't know if there's ever been brotherly love in that city, but Philadelphia. And just one day, Mark, after basketball fans in Philly were celebrating that they got the number one pick in the NFL draft, Sam Bradford came out with uh, NBA with some comments. I, I said NFL draft. See, I've got football on the mind. The NBA as draft. As you should. I've got football on the mind all day, every day. But Sam Bradford came out with some comments, and I'm going to drop them on you before we talk about it. And I quote, he says, Drop it upon me, Ricky. This was about them trading to get Carson Wentz. He says, and I quote, When I first found out about the trade, that would be the one for the second overall pick, I was frustrated. I needed some time. I could have stayed here, but I'm not sure my head would have been here. Obviously, there's no promises in this business it wasn't a long-term deal. It was a two-year deal. I was well aware we talked about that. And he goes on about his age and how he felt about the trade. And the one thing I did like that he said at the very end was, you know what? I demanded the trade because obviously he felt hurt, but he's going to come in. He's going to do his job. He kind of felt like the team was being taken away from him, but he's going to come in here and work hard until that happens basically until Wentz pushes him out the door. Yeah, it was kind of a uh, lose lose situation for Sam Bradford because there wasn't a market for Sam Bradford. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know why the Philadelphia Eagles gave him this deal in the first place. There really was no market for well, him. Well, why Chip Kelly gave him this deal in the first place? Well, yeah, I mean, problems have been solved uh, when it comes to the Philadelphia Eagles. So, like I said, it, it was a lose lose because. For Sam, for Sam Bradford, he couldn't get traded anywhere, so he had to come back. He didn't want to come back because he had made this statement, and once you make a statement like that, you got to hold true. Mm-hmm. you got to hold strong. And I actually kind of don't like the fact that he's back because I, I in, my, in my heart of hearts, I feel if you were going to do that, you have to show some balls, and you have to have held out for a reasonable amount of time. Even if you know you're going to come back, at least miss some practice. Because mm-hmm. uh, we ain't talking about practice. And the problem with that, though, is that Carson Wentz, the longer Carson Wentz gets the first team reps, the more likely it is Sam Bradford loses that job. So he's going to look like he doesn't have any backbone Mm -hmm. because he came back early and is now saying, sorry, guys, I was just hurt. I actually like what he said. I like the explanation. I like the rationale because it's very human. He's just saying, hey, I was hurt. I felt like I was being pushed out. I took some time to think about it. And I said, you know what? I'm going to make the most of what I got. You know, that's all he's doing. The one thing I actually would have liked to see out of Sam Bradford, just some little competitive edge, is for him to not kind of allude to, I'm here until I get pushed out, is him to go, no, no I'm going to win I'm this here. job and keep it. Yeah, this is my job. 
they can worry about you know number two overall mm-hmm. later. But I got two years, and it's my two years at least if I don't come back and do well, more. Really, it'd be his one year because last year was the first year of his two years in that's, Philly. That's true. But if you're Sam Bradford, the way you got to think about this, and I kind of feel like he's kind of at that point, and I hope it really falls on the Eagles if he gets to live this out to fruition, but he's got to make the word. This is a contract year for him. Basically, this Not year. Not in Philadelphia, but somewhere yeah, else. Yeah, no, this, and I was going to get to, this should be an audition year. You know what? Because there's going to be a team that may need a quarterback, and the teams that I'm looking at, right now that could be in a need for a quarterback. The New York Jets, depending on if Christian Hackenberg pans out, I know that they took Hackenberg, but depending on if that works out, Cleveland could be in the market for a quarterback because who knows if RG3... They're going to draft one. But if you could get... If Sam Bradford has a lights-out season, they can go with the vet and then use two top-ten picks on other areas of their team, kind of like they did this season... Or there could be other teams like, I don't know, we could finally see maybe the Arizona Cardinals needing a quarterback. And instead of drafting, because the way I put it in my way too early mock draft, because according to footballoutsiders.com, they've got the last pick. So that means they're the Super Bowl champs. If Which, they, if that happens, Carson Palmer yeah, he rides walks. off into the sunset. He walks. He yeah. elways it. He mannings it. He becomes Peyton Manning. But... Equal Manning. Equal Manning. I forgot. Eli and uh, Peyton are equal now. They're both equal Manning. But if that happens, the Cardinals could be in the market for a quarterback. So if you're Sam Bradford, you are playing for a job somewhere else. Who knows? Maybe the Bears trade Jay Cutler and they need a quarterback. Anything can happen in an entire year's worth of time in the NFL. Mm -hmm. For sure. And for me, I think Carson Wentz... Everybody's going to say he's the guy who needs to sit mm-hmm. longer, you know. He, if you've got he Sam should Bradford, start later give him a than year. sooner. Give yeah. him a year. Exactly. So let Sam Bradford play out this entire year. That's what's really going to be the way to do it. Uh, that's really what you want. And honestly, there's no need for Carson Wentz to show up this year. There might not even be a need for him to show up next year. Uh, if you can pull something else off and maybe get another, I don't know if you want to get another journeyman quarterback in here, but having him just sit and learn is going to be great. That's what you want to do. Uh, I, I appreciate the way Sam Bradford came up. He owned everything and he explained himself very, very well. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any lingering doubts or any questions when it comes to Sam Bradford anymore, uh, at least with this stuff. The questions, of course, are going to be the on the field you know, his his play on the field. But we're going to see that soon enough because it's time for practice. It's time for the, mm-hmm. you know, preseason to come up soon enough. The OTAs, which have already started. Mm-hmm. Which Sam Bradford apparently looks pretty decent. He looked pretty good uh, for day one. So it'll be, it'll be really interesting to me to see if Sam Bradford can, in fact, do well in Philadelphia this year and launch himself into yet another contract that doesn't really make sense. He doesn't really deserve Uh, (laughs) because this man's been overpaid every single, you know, every single day of his NFL career. You know what I still remember? And this is going into the way back machine Uh and opening up the vault to uh, past onside kick shows when Dave Oster, who's now a part of the fast break podcast, when he used to be on the onside kick with us, Mm -hmm. I remember I don't remember which injury it was, but I remember it was the week Bradford got Take injured. Take yeah. What did Dave say that first podcast because he can't stand Sam Bradford and his he injuries? Hates Sam Bradford. He's just like, good. Thank God. Because, I mean, it's terrible to say that when someone gets injured, but that's how Dave felt. I still remember that mm-hmm. to this day. It seems like he's always getting injured each and every year. It's interesting, too, because Sam Bradford, if you remember, was the last quarterback to get paid before the the new the deal. Hike. Mm-hmm. Yeah, before they said, nope, we're the cutting set, this off. like, rookie salaries. Yeah, exactly. He was the last one to get that mm-hmm. huge monster deal. So there's always been this kind of weight and this kind of pressure on him and this hype about him, and he's just never lived up to it. If we, honestly, if he was getting paid the same amount that, let's say... 
you know, that Andrew Luck got paid. You know, that a, a number one quarterback after Sam Bradford's year is getting paid. There would not be all this hype about him or all this kind of expectation, all this kind of, I don't want to say resentment. I don't think that's the right word, but all we're all looking at it. We all look at his, him and his contract and we're like, wow, didn't live up to that. But if he was just getting paid what an RG3 or an Andrew Luck got paid, mm-hmm. I don't think we'd have that. You know, I don't think we'd really make that big of a deal about Sam Bradford, but it's the fact that he keeps getting paid that we we keep holding on to this idea and keep going, man, really? You just can't get it forward. You're a really big disappointment. You know, we look at him as such a big bust, if not one of the biggest busts since, you know, guys like Ryan Leaf. That's the way people look at Sam Bradford, and it's really just because of that contract. Just well, because of that saying contract the, he the got. You're saying the mega one he got. As that last kind of yeah. rookie mega contract. Mm-hmm. People just kind of look at him that way. And I, it's unfortunate for Sam Bradford, but that's the reality of what it is. He's got all that extra pressure on him, and he has not lived up to it. And the one thing I'm thinking in my head is I'm trying to come up with a comparison of, because part of me in my head is like, man, I have seen this before. And the first one that came into my head, maybe it's because um, we're here in Chicago. However, it doesn't fit. After I looked at it, it doesn't fit. I thought, oh, kind of like Rex Grossman and Kyle Orton when Kyle Orton got pushed out. But I'm like, no, he got pushed out by Cutler. Yeah. And I guess if you put the microcosm on the season of Orton was the starting quarterback in 2005, and then the only full season Grossman had was 06, that was the Super Bowl year. Mm -hmm. I know you don't know what I'm talking about because you'll forget. I remember the year. You just don't remember how it ended. I don't remember how that season ended. That's a good point. I do remember Devin Hester returns a kickoff for a touchdown for the first time in NFL history in the Super Bowl. But you know what's a better comparison, I believe, to this? Drew Brees and Phillip Rivers. Because Drew Brees was from San Diego, or yeah, San Diego from 01 to 05. Phillip Rivers came in 2004, was his first year. Philip Rivers set two years, and then in 06, Phillip's our guy. What did the Chargers do? They shipped Drew Brees off to New Orleans. I could see a similar thing happen in here for the for the Philadelphia that Eagles. That Sam Bradford wins a Super Bowl? The only, difference, the only difference is I could see it as Wentz sits two years Bradford gets this year. Chase Daniels gets next year. Then Chase then, Daniels wins a Super Bowl. And then Wentz is your starter in, what would that be, 2016 mm-hmm. to 2018, Wentz is your starter. Would I love that? No, because the second overall pick, I think, mm-hmm. if if Wentz doesn't start next year, Philly burn the, burn the whole thing to the ground. So the real question is, when does Chase Daniels, what team does Chase Daniels go to, and when does he win a Super Bowl? He's going to go to... Oh, he's got to go to a South team. Mm-hmm. So maybe in that time, maybe he goes to the, oh, man, all the South teams. Who could teams need a new quarterback, yeah. The Falcons, unless they want to move on from Matty Matt Ice Ryan. Matty Ice is about, what, 31? Yeah. Uh, yeah, if they want to move on from Matt Ryan. I mean, yeah. they're, the, they're the only team, unless he goes to the Saints. Boom. Drew Brees is Drew Brees almost is done. Too. He's yeah. almost done in this league. And, I mean, if you're thinking, well, Ricky, Phillip Rivers was almost in the same boat as Wentz, hold your horses. Philip Rivers was a fourth overall pick, not a second overall pick. Yeah, so calm down, guys. Th- that's why, because he was double the pick choice. You take mm-hmm. Wentz's and times it by two, that means that's that extra year. So Therefore, because you can Chase divide, Daniels will win two Super yep, Bowls. So he'll win two Super Bowls with the Saints. For two different saying. teams. <laughs> two Super Bowls, two different teams. It's really impressive but at I, the same time. But part of me feels like I can't fault Sam Bradford for this situation. And the reason being is if you look at a different story from the Eagles, there are rumors out there that during the middle rounds of the NFL draft that the Eagles fielded and received calls from teams, mainly the Niners, about trading Darren Sproles. And Darren Sproles is not happy. And even though he says he's, oh, my not going to OTAs isn't because of this, Let's be honest. It's because of this. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a messy situation for the Philadelphia Eagles. I think this team, you know, I, I kind of feel like the locker room 
was Chip Kelly really the problem? That's what I'm starting to think. I don't even necessarily think was it's... Was he really no, the he problem? Was. He was a big problem. But was he the sole... Like, it's one of those things where I think in my head, okay, we're not letting you completely off the hook, but were you the only crazy kook in the kitchen? Well, I think he kind of also... There might be some other you know crazy cooks like to the use owner. your reference. Um, but he kind of fostered this culture uh, that was not healthy and was not working out well. And it's still there. It hasn't gone away yet, and it won't go away yet. It you won't know, you go away kind until of Peterson kind of works his magic and says, okay, I'm going to implement my system. So the Philadelphia problem, I honestly I, I don't expect great things from this team. I don't expect bad things from this team. or I should say I don't expect terrible things from this team. I think they'll be pretty all right. But I I really think that it's just kind of this team that's going to be going through some growing pains for a little while. Uh, And the future success of this team, in my eyes, really depends on... It's weird to say this, but Sam Bradford being good enough that Chase Daniels doesn't have to start. Because if he has to start, I don't think he's going to do that well. And then he is going to lose that job, even if it's not this season that he loses it to Carson Wentz, but it's next season that he loses. And Carson Wentz is a starter from day one of the following season. I think Carson Wentz needs more than just one year. He can do the Aaron Rodgers of being very, very successful, Mm -hmm. but he needs more than just one year. It didn't just, you know, Aaron Rodgers didn't just happen in one year. He had a lot of time to sit there and learn and watch Brett Favre play, but not talk to Brett Favre. Um, well, yeah, because Brett, Brett Favre, Favre said, "Sit down, kid." It's kind of like the Tom Brady Garoppolo relationship, or the Garoppolo. Uh, I know I the said it wrong. Peyton Manning with Brocky, sit your ass down. I'm still gonna Brock, play. If I, it's kind of like uh, Friday Night Lights. Where's my helmet? Where's my helmet? <laughs> Rookie yeah. puts on the helmet and goes out there, and yeah. then he gets injured. Well, yeah. That's what happened in season two. Well, let's not yeah. worry about that yeah. right now. Booby, Booby Miles got injured. Spoilers, yeah. Booby Miles. Hey, spoiler dude here. Yeah, I'm that's try- true. Trying to be as famous as that, uh, You did you see that Utah State uh, Snapchat story? No. About Spoiler Girl? No. Where I guess she would go on the Snapchat and do spoilers hmm. for movies. Interesting. She gave a spoiler to Shrek. In case you not saw Shrek. Shrek. Not, not Shrek. I mean, you, you don't want to spoil that. But, yeah, I just think with That's the Eagles, <laughs> it is a classic. But Donkey. With, <laughs> Donkey. Why, how, why do I do this? Why, I don't know. Why you do I get a subtrack? But now people are going to be like, why the fuck are they talking about Shrek? But final line on the Eagles, it's messed up. And is it? are they going to change anytime soon? I'm going to say no because my honest opinion and Eagle fans, you're not going to like me. I'll say it now. I'll say it for the rest of the season. You're my team that last year the Niners were my number one pick team. You are my number one pick team. However, wait a second. You don't get the pick. The Browns do. Browns are my number one pick team via the Eagles. That would make you feel really bad about that Carson Wentz trade. Um, especially if he comes in and he's kind of well, a dud that be, first year. Especially because if they are the number one pick, that means Sam Bradford was terrible. And that means they could have gotten Deshaun Watson this year and didn't have to trade for yeah. once. You kick Sam, you're going to kick Sam Bradford out of there. Chase Daniels is not going to be good enough to keep the job when you got the number two overall pick sitting there under it. Everyone's going to go, you know, where the where's Carson Wentz? Where is this guy who we drafted? And I want to see him play. And you can possibly give the Brown the Browns this draft if everything holds the form in the college football season. Uh huh. They can grab the quarterback in the future in Deshaun Watson, and the running back in the future in Leonard Fournette. Yeah, and just be fucking set. Like Pretty try much. try getting back getting past those two. Like, you're setting up your two top positions on offense for years to come because they hit the wide receiver position this year in tenfold 